is. I definitely have, and I've gotten a ton of questions on my barley videos, what we use our barley for. So today, Ryan's going to take us on a tour. We're going to learn all about it. It's super exciting. So let's get into the video. Now Ryan's going to explain exactly what malt is. Ah, hello everyone. Malt is basically the first step in order to get sugar out of a grain. Um, most malt is used for barley, but it also can, you can also use the sugar for many other products such as malted milk balls or malted syrup or even ultimately malt vinegar. Oh yes, definitely. And we have some of those with us here today. And Ryan is a craft malter, so that's absolutely amazing. And he's going to share a little bit more about his operation. How is malt made? Um, generally, it's a three-step process. Um, you take the raw barley of malt quality, you get it wet to soak it, and you want to get it to sprout. So the first step is generally considered the steep, and that's getting the water into the barley. Then once the water, the barley is sufficiently hydrated, uh, next we move to the next step, which we call germination, and that's where you let the barley kernel start to grow, just like it's in the ground, but we're tricking it. Um, growing and that's usually about a four to five day process and once it's grown to a sufficient point We now kiln it down or dry it back down That's roughly a one to two day process to dry it back down and get it down to moisture where it's now again sh uh, Shelf stable and wouldn't spoil of course the reason we do that is because The starches in a barley kernel are all locked up in the cells and we want to get them released and malting is tricking the kernel into growing and it's starting to break down the cell walls and starting to create the precursors of sugar that it can use to fuel us up out of the ground. But sadly, as malters, we don't let it get that far. We dry it down and kill it. Um, and then it's ready. Those sugars and starches are ready for subsequent processes, for the brewer to use or someone making malt sugar to use. Then they get the sugar out of the barley. That's very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Barley is grain that... We grow on our farm and Ryan grows it on his farm and lots of farmers grow. And now we're kind of going to show you what types of barley, two row and six row. And here are what they look like. So common types of barley are two row and six row. Could you explain a little bit more about uh, what that is? Yeah, um, this particular one is a six row barley. And if you were able to look at it from the end, you can see six rows. <laughs> This one is a two row barley, and if you look at it from the end, there's two rows. Um, six row used to be very common in North America, um, but I don't know, over the last maybe 30 years or so, um, most of the breeding efforts have gone into two row. So pretty much everyone, especially in Montana, grow two row barley anymore. I do, um, there's a little bit of six row grown in other parts of the country. Now I've gotten a lot of questions about the difference between wheat and barley, and here on the left, we have wheat, and then on the right, we have barley. And if you notice, the wheat doesn't have a husk on it, and a husk is the little covering that the barley has. Now the reason barley is so important for malting is because of its husk. Now Ryan's going to explain a little bit why that's so important. Uh, like Kate said, the, on wheat, the barley, the husk is there when it's growing in the, in the head of the grain, but then it gets blown out the back of the combine. With barley, it's attached and stays attached at all times. And that's absolutely perfect for barley being used for beer because later on in the process, that husk actually gets used as the filter in the brewing process to filter the liquids away from the solid. That's very interesting. I mean, the whole process is so fascinating. Thank you. Ryan has the malted barley, and then I have normal barley. And you notice it looks a little bit like the same, but there's big differences that Ryan's going to talk <laughs> about that make it way more delicious to eat malted barley. Yes, on the, if you actually chew it, there's a significant difference. The malt is much crisper and actually has a little bit of sweetness. And that's because the internal cell walls have been broken down and all the starches are starting to turn into sugar. And uh, it's actually quite tasty. Yes, definitely. And it's so interesting. I tried a normal barley and then the malted barley, the crunchy barley, and it's so different, although it looks very similar. Now, Ryan has a super special way of making malt. So how do you kind of make your malt? I spoke about the three steps, the steep, the germ, and the kiln. And most larger scale malt houses actually have three separate vessels and they move it around. Um, I came up with a drum design that I built here on the farm. And we actually do all three steps within the same drum, the steep, the germ, and the kiln. And uh, one of the reasons I like the drum so much is because 
as you're malting things heat up and you really need to stir it a lot to get a very uniform quality product and in the larger vessels it's hard to stir um, frankly all the large commercial malt houses would love to have a drum they just can't make enough but on the craft scale drums are perfect for what we do it's absolutely <laughs> incredible i cannot even begin to believe that you could build such an incredible machine yeah <laughs> Uh, it's one of the things we do on the farm. I, we love building things and designing things, and, and uh, thankfully we're farmers, and that gives us the ability to do it. Definitely. It is so special to buy craft products and craft malt because you get a totally different experience, and you're supporting uh, local farmers and also local craft malters. Thank you. I agree. Why do we malt? We malt to get sugar. Um, to get sugar out of something like a grape is quite easy. You just squeeze it and then you have sugar. To get sugar out of a grain is a little more tricky and we have to, that's what malting is. We have to trick the grain into growing so it is going to start fueling itself with sugar. But of course in the malting process we stop it early and then we can later use that sugar that we formed in the kernel to brew or make malt syrup or, or malt, malt a nut ball. Yes, definitely. Thank you. What is the history on your family farm? Oh, thank you. Um, my family is mostly uh, Germans from Russia immigrants. They came, one set of my family came to Montana in about 1915 and the other came in the late 1930s. They homesteaded around here just south of town in power and the other ones homesteaded on what we call the Fairfield bench over here. Oh, okay. A bunch of Germans went to Russia and they didn't work out so well there so then they left Russia and came to America and they came, my ancestors came to South Dakota in the late 1800s and I guess it didn't work out so well there, and in 1915 and in the 1930s they came to Montana and homesteaded. And I'm now the fourth generation and we still own and farm the family homestead. That's just amazing. Those are my great grandparents who came over in 1915 and 1913 and step on down now I'm fourth generation farming and we've got the third generation hiding over there. <laughs> Hi dad. <laughs> Hi. Uh, yep, I started farming in 1974, and uh, Ryan started in <laughs> 2007, I think it was. Yeah, about 2007 when I came back. Well, I'm a fourth generation as well. Okay. And so that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long time. That's all I ever <laughs> wanted to do is farm. Really? Uh, yeah. When that's I, amazing. When my wife graduated from college. We packed up the trailer and moved to power. <laughs> and she cried the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> and now she wouldn't leave power if it, her life depended on it. But I had oh, to move to amazing. Scotland to get my wife to come back. So. <laughs> that's so fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. My grandparents were a matched marriage. My grandpa homesteaded in power in 1915. Wow. <clears throat> Lots of fun family history back there. Yes, great history. Thank you so much. Yep, you're very welcome. How did you get into malting? <laughs> well, after uh, after university, I got an engineering degree, and I was as an engineer. I worked as an engineer for eight years, and I don't know. It seemed to be half the engineers at the firm I worked with were home brewing. So, as I as everyone was doing, I got into home brewing and just absolutely loved the process. But one thing I always didn't like about my home brewing is that I couldn't use my own family's barley to brew my homebrew beer. So I ended up eventually building this little drum machine here too and made my family's barley into malt and used it in my home brewing. And then I guess you could say things got a little out of control and I started making more and more malt and now we got this drum. That's amazing. Thank you. Do you have any tips for people who want to start home brewing or malting barley? Homebrewing is a fantastic hobby and there's so many resources on the internet and it's actually not near as hard as you think. You can make it as, as complicated as you want or you can make it as simple as you want. So yeah, I would just get on the internet, start researching. Um, you Obviously you can buy your malt initially and if you want to get really crazy and start making your own malt, then uh, I guess get a hold of me or Kate here and we'll get you some raw barley and <laughs> you yes, can practice malting yourself. That's amazing, thank you. Now what do you do with your malt? Uh, here at Farm Power Malt, we like to sell to local Montana breweries. We take our malt, we package it in the bags and sell it to local Montana breweries. Um, but another cool thing that we really do is we actually will take talk to some of our brewing friends and get 
barley or wheat, we can malt wheat too, from their local farming community, and we'll custom malt it for it. Then when they use their malt, that malt in their craft beers, then they have that super hyper local connection to their surrounding community. Definitely. And so if you ever need any malted barley, Ryan and <laughs> Farm Power Malt is the perfect place to get it from because this is the best process ever and you have the best operation ever. Thank you. So what malt looks like when we're done kilning and it's a dried product, but you can still see the roots are still attached. So uh, the last step in what we do here at Farm Power Malt is we have to knock the roots off and uh, clean it up and bag it. So here's a quick overview of Ryan's process. It's very exciting. <laughs> Thank you. We keep it simple here at Farm Power Malt. We bring in bulk bags from our uh, grain bins outside, let it maculate. We'll put it in our little auger here <laughs> into our seed cleaner. And from the seed cleaner, it goes into the drum. We, once it's in the drum, we'll add water to the sufficient amount of weight. Um, our drum is actually on scales, so we know how much water to add. And we turn it a lot, of course, to keep things mixed up. After it's sufficiently hydrated, we let it germinate for four or five, six days, depending on what kind of malt we're gonna make. And during all that, we are bringing in fresh air, so we extract the CO2, and we're also humidifying the air that's coming in to make sure, and we're also acclimating the temperature of the air coming really in interesting. to give that perfect conditions for that uh, barley to germinate. It's super technical. <laughs> well, I suppose. <laughs> Once it is germinated sufficiently and all the cell walls have been broken down, at that point we want to stop the growth and that's where we kiln it. And we will put on the hot air at different temperatures depending on what type of malt we want to make. Or we can even put hot air on when it's wet and, and heat. Oh, okay. We can keep all the humidity in there and caramelize the malt if we want. Or we can bring in fresh air, dry air, and dry down the malt. And we use temperature and humidity and different levels to make different types of malt. Um, once the kiln is done, it's dried down sufficiently to now it's shelf stable and we can give it to brewers and they don't have to use it right away. Oh, and it's very interesting how you can take just a couple of your barley, the way you malt it, it can create tons of different flavors and it's just the same varieties of barley can create so many different things. Yeah, I, I speculate maybe, maybe 50 different malts are commonly used in a brewery. And yes, depending on how you process it, you can take the same barley and make those malts. So. Yes. Once um, w once the barley's done kilning, we still have the roots attached and whatnot. So most companies use a debeerder. We didn't really want to spend money on a debeerder. We modified the top of our auger here to kind of rough up and debeard and break off the roots of the malt. And we run it back through the cleaner then so those roots get separated. And if you wanted to... Here's a bunch of roots from our last malting run and a uh, wild oat seed. But, uh, and that's, that's so interesting how seed cleaning is uh, very important in your process as well. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely go check <laughs> that one out. I did a video about seed cleaning as well. So it's just so cool how they all are a part of different operations. Absolutely. Yeah. If you didn't remove these roots, your, your beer wouldn't taste as good as you want. Thank you so much. Of course. So, although I'm 16 and I definitely don't drink beer, I think it's definitely something we should talk about in the brewing process. Yeah, earlier I talked about how you can take the same malt and make up to, or same barley, excuse me, and make up to 50 different malts. Uh, here at Farm Power Malt, we make about six different types of malt. Most of them are base malts like a Pilsner or a, a Two Row, or even get a little higher kiln like a Vienna and Munich malt. And the brewer will take once they're done with here, we'll give them to the brewer, and the brewer will take all these different malts, and that's kind of where their art comes in. They'll take those malts and mix them in different ratios and make the different types of beers. Of course, they add hops and whatnot, too. And they will grind up our malt and add water and at a very specific temperature, enzymes that we created in the malting process get activated, and that's the those enzymes do the final step and chomp all the carbohydrates and whatnot, starches up into sugars, and then they now have the sugar they need for the yeast to fuel the yeast, and the yeast ultimately makes the ethanol. That's incredibly ethanol. fascinating. Yes. All of the technical behind the scenes, super interesting work leads to the final product that you've all been hoping for, a beer. <laughs> a beer. And although I can't drink it, Ryan can explain a little more. <laughs> well, I, I'll be honest, it's quite satisfying at the end of the hard day on the farm to enjoy a beer 
that you grew the grain, you malted it, and you delivered it to the local brewery. So, although Kate can't, I'm going to enjoy a wonderful craft beer from my local craft brewery. Make sure to support your local farmers and drink local. You're supporting family operations and people like Ryan. Thank you so much for the tour. This has been amazing. Now, to learn more about Ryan 